She didn't know she was walking into this. A family emotional, holding on to each other as they remember Valerie Junius, who police say was shot and killed by her husband inside their Katie home on Roaring Oaks Lane on Thursday. Her kids don't deserve this. If you have family, that are in unhappy relationships, if you have friends that are in unhappy relationships, to stand by them, to talk to them, to check on them, to smother them. Because I wish I called my cousin. I wish I called her. This family now begging for justice. I don't care who out there that thinks that he was right or justified in his actions. It ain't nothing she could have did in this world that made her deserve what she went through. It don't make any nothing that made her kids deserve what they watched their mama go through. So I urge you all to stand up as a community, as a family, and stand united and show up at these court dates because he don't deserve this is the story of Valerie Junis, a 36-year-old mother of six whose life took a horrifying turn one fateful evening. In a devastating act of domestic violence, her husband, 53-year-old Lawrence Reed, unleashed a barrage of gunfire leaving Valerie mortally wounded and her children traumatized. This tragic incident would leave a family devastated and a once peaceful community in shock. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Katy, Texas. Valerie Junis, a resident of Katy, Texas was a great mother, pouring her heart and soul into the well-being and happiness of her six children. Valerie's children were the center of her world, and every decision she made, every action she took, was fueled by her deep-rooted desire to give them the best life possible. Originally from Chicago, Valerie now resided in Katy, Texas. She found love when she met 53-year-old Lawrence Reed. The two would later get married and things between the two appeared to be going well, but this marriage would unfortunately start to crumble, and Valerie grew unhappy in her marriage. The couple reportedly had a tumultuous relationship over the years, causing Valerie to spend extended periods of time away from him. At times she would go stay with friends and family in her hometown of Chicago. The details of what exactly went on behind closed doors between the couple is unclear, but at some point, Valerie decided it was time to get away from her husband, and she was in the process of finding a way to leave him permanently. After returning home from a month-long stay in Chicago, the very next day, Valerie's life would take a tragic turn. On July 29, 2021 on a Thursday evening around 8 p.m., gunfire shattered the tranquility of Valerie's neighborhood, as her husband Larry mercilessly opened fire on her within the confines of their family home in Katy. Severely wounded, she managed to escape, seeking refuge in a neighbor's driveway, her body bearing the evidence of her husband's brutality, with multiple gunshot wounds to her stomach and arm. The horror did not end there. With callous determination, Lawrence pursued Valerie, cornering her in the neighbor's driveway. In an act of cold-blooded violence, he took aim and fatally shot her in the head, the shocking sight witnessed by a horrified neighbor who had rushed to help. Tragically, Valerie's 16-year-old son and 20-year-old daughter were also targeted by Lawrence's wrath. Their lives were forever altered as bullets tore through their bodies, leaving them to battle not only physical wounds, but emotional scars that would haunt them for years to come. Among the witnesses to this nightmarish scene were Valerie's younger children, aged 12 and 8, who were forced to bear witness to the terrifying destruction of their family. Innocence shattered, their lives forever marred by the violence that unfolded within the walls they once considered home. Valerie's mother, Gloria, was subjected to a chilling ordeal over the phone that no mother should ever have to hear. She was forced to listen as Lawrence Reed threatened to end Valerie's life and that of her children. The horrifying conversation took a terrible turn when Valerie's mother heard the sound of seven gunshots on the phone. It was a chilling moment listening to her daughter's life being taken in such a horrific way. In the aftermath of this devastating crime, deputies from the Harris County Sheriff's Office arrived on scene and discovered Valerie dead on the ground. She had been shot and killed. Her husband Lawrence had barricaded himself inside the house and threatened to end himself, which led to a tense standoff with law enforcement. The negotiators spoke with Lawrence for about 25 to 30 minutes and were eventually able to get him to surrender and come out of the home. Deputies immediately arrested him. A family emotional, holding on to each other as they remember Valerie Junius, who police say was shot and killed by her husband inside their Katy home on Roaring Oaks Lane on Thursday. Lawrence Reed was arrested and charged with murder. 
Her cousin says Junius was planning on leaving Reed. She was going to leave him. She was tired. Junius was staying in Chicago, where she's from, with her family and friends for about a month. Her cousin says she returned home the day before she was murdered. He knew it was over when she stayed in Chicago as long as she stayed. He knew it was over. He killed her. He didn't even give her a chance. She leaves behind six children, ranging from 20 to 4 years old. Two of the children were also struck by bullets and survived. Her kids don't deserve this. Domestic violence has become a troubling trend in the area with the Harris County Sheriff's Office telling ABC 13 News they've seen an uptick in 2021. If you have family that are in unhappy relationships, if you have friends that are in unhappy relationships, to stand by them, to talk to them, to check on them, to smother them, because I wish I called my cousin. I wish I called her. This family now begging for justice. Reed is scheduled to be in court on Monday. Law enforcement was now faced with a difficult task of unraveling the motive behind this heinous act. As the investigation unfolded, a disturbing pattern of ongoing domestic turmoil between Lawrence and Valerie emerged, providing a glimpse into the darkness that had enveloped their relationship, eventually resulting in this unspeakable tragedy. Neighbors, grappling with shock and disbelief, struggled to understand the horrors that had unfolded in their once peaceful community. Ivory Jackson, who lives nearby, couldn't believe what happened. I know I heard about five shots. There's one here and then two this way at one child and then two this way. And he hit that child. And then my sister said she had about four or five in the house. Ivory Jackson spent part of his morning cleaning the sidewalk. We could smell the strong bleach odor as he told us how he ran out of his house into the gunfire, attempting to save his next door neighbor's life. She had gunshots in her stomach, arm, and that's when he came back out. Don't help her. She's dead. I shot her in the head. So I looked in the head and of course. Homicide detectives say Lawrence Reed is responsible for a triple shooting. They say the husband took aim at his wife, Valerie Junis, around 850 last night and then shot her 16 year old son and 20 year old daughter. Photos from social media show the couple. Junis died near a neighbor's driveway. I hear all the kids now and I see him come up and he's like, you know, talking crap to the kids and he shoots that way and he shoots this way and I see the kid go like this. That's what I run up and I'm like, man, dude, what, you know, what's going on? Just from what I heard, it was, it was a pretty chaotic scene. Neighbors like Alex Soto couldn't go home last night. Deputies say Reed barricaded himself in the house, leading to a 30 minute standoff with SWAT. They talked Reed out and eventually cuffed him. Great people. I mean, when I when I talk to them and see them quite often out here with their kids, I mean, it seemed like just great people overall. You know, nothing that would indicate, you know, anything like that, anything like that. You know, we barbecue, they come over, they barbecue, we come over. You know, it's just, it's never any bad times around here. You know, it's always peaceful, sunny. You know, you wouldn't think that would happen somewhere like this. He was shocked that there were no warning signs or clues that something terrible was about to happen. The neighborhood seemed peaceful and calm, but the tragic event shattered that illusion. Valerie's devastated family openly expressed their deep sorrow, giving us a glimpse into her life beyond the tragic event. They spoke about how she was a loving and devoted mother who always put her children first, showering them with love and doing everything she could to ensure their well-being. As the wounded children begin the difficult journey toward physical and emotional recovery, their lives forever altered, the community grapples with the aftermath of this senseless act of violence. Meanwhile, Lawrence Reed, the perpetrator of this heinous crime, awaits justice behind the cold, unyielding bars of the Harris County Jail, facing charges of murder and aggravated assault. His bail was set at $1.7 million. The weekend after Valerie's tragic murder, family organized a memorial service to honor her life. Relatives and neighbors came together outside of her residence at Roaring Oaks Lane in Katy, the very place where the devastating incident took place on Thursday. Friends and family are remembering a woman who investigators say was shot and killed by her husband. Two of her children were also injured in that shooting. Just hours ago, community members held a balloon release for Valerie Junis. She is in a place where she has her wings, Father God. There were prayers. <laughs> balloon release followed by tears, raw emotion from a family mourning Valerie Junis, a mother of six, who family members say was always smiling. <laughs> Two of Junis's children, one of them 16, the other 20, were also shot. Both are expected to make a full recovery. A 16-year-old bandaged up, still in attendance. 
loved ones, assuring him and the rest of his siblings they would do their best to take care of them. My cousin was a, a very good mother to the best of her ability. She loved her kids. Everything she did was for her kids. My condolences to Valerie's friends and family. I am sorry you must go through this. She should have been allowed to move on with her life. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. Leaving an abusive situation can be incredibly challenging. Leave at a safe time. Plan your departure for a time when the abuser is not present, if possible. This reduces the risk of confrontation or escalating violence during the exit. Coordinate with your support network to ensure a smooth transition. Keep your intentions confidential. It's essential to maintain secrecy about your plans to leave. Sharing this information with the abuser can escalate the danger and make it harder for you to leave safely. Be cautious of your online activities, communication, and phone usage to avoid suspicion and remember if you ever feel like you are in immediate danger, seek help from emergency services or contact local authorities for assistance. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.